share this video so you and your friends can laugh at a theater major dropout, me, trying and failing to pronounce a long list of scientific words. Welcome back! I am Zombie Zebra, this is Zombie Zoology, and this video is part of my series on the 2017 classification update to the Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Recently, there were 19 articles released into a medical journal, which is the most progress and information that we have seen in almost 20 years. So I'm very excited to dig into these articles one by one with you. Let's get started. This first one is called the 2017 International Classification of the Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. This is going to be a breakdown of all of the classifications of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and their diagnostic criteria. There are some new ones on here and there are some that have some updated criteria, so I'm going to go through all of those today. The Ehlers-Danlos Syndromes, EDS, are a heterogeneous group of heritable connective tissue disorders, HCTD characterized by joint hypermobility, skin hyperextendability, and tissue fragility. One underlying assumption was that most, if not all, of these types of EDS were a consequence of alteration in fibular collagen genes or in the genes that encoded collagen modifiers. There's a lot to unpack there. Think of a woven basket. The material of the basket all has to be woven together. There are lots of different strands there, but they're all important because if one gives out, a lot of it frays away. Well, there are lots of different kinds of protein and collagen that make up our connective tissue. And most of these Ehlers-Danlos syndromes have to do with a specific protein, not always the same one, but breaking down and being ineffective, which therefore weakens the entire structure. It doesn't mean that all of the protein your body produces is ineffective. Actually, most types have it down to just one or two types that is being produced ineffectively. So, that is largely what it means when they're talking about fibular collagen. That is the woven wicker basket of your body, essentially. And that's going to come up several times, so keep that in mind. So as the article says, we propose a set of major and minor clinical criteria for each EDS subtype. A major criterion has a high diagnostic specificity because it is present in the vast majority of the... Okay, I'm going to translate this. What they want you to know before reading through these subtypes is that they have divided things up into major and minor criteria or criterion. What they mean by that is that major criteria present in a large number of people diagnosed with this type of EDS. Minor characteristics are characteristics that can be used to bolster a suspected diagnosis, as they do demonstrate in some people, but it is not necessarily the norm. There is nothing in the minor characteristics that if you read it and you're like, oh, I don't have that, that suddenly means you don't have the subtype. The major characteristics are what you want to focus on. But each subtype will have a breakdown for you of how many major and minor criterion you'll need to fill in order to qualify for that subtype. Without any further ado, allow me to present to you the 2017 classifications of the Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. First is classical EDS. Major criteria of skin hyperextendability and atrophic scarring, as well as generalized joint hypermobility. Minor criteria. Easy bruising, soft doughy skin, skin fragility, molluscoid pseudotumors, subcutaneous spheroids, a hernia or history thereof, epicanthal folds, complications of joint hypermobility, such as sprains, subluxations, dislocations, family history of a first-degree relative who meets the clinical criteria. The minimal criteria suggested for a classical Ehlers-Danlos syndrome diagnosis is major criteria 1, which is the skin hyperextendability and atrophic scarring, plus either major criteria 2, which is the joint hypermobility, and or at least three minor criteria. It's possible to confirm a classical EDS diagnosis with molecular testing, and that is a pretty obligatory step before reaching final diagnosis. Our next classification is classical-like EDS. It appears the difference between classical and classical-like is that it affects a different protein, but I could be wrong about that. The journal did not go into detail on the difference between the two, so I will just go through the criteria right now. Major criteria. Number one, skin hyperextendability with velvety skin texture and absence of atrophic scarring. Number two is generalized joint hypermobility with or without recurrent dislocations, most commonly shoulder and ankle. Number three is easy, bruisable skin. Minor criteria, foot deformities. Number two, edema in the legs in absence of cardiac failure. Number three, mild proximal and distal muscle weakness. Number four, axonal polyneuropathy. Number five, 
Atrophy of muscles in hands and feet. Number six, acrogaric hands or mallet fingers. Number seven, vaginal, uterus, or rectal prolapse. The minimal criteria suggested for a classical like Ehlers-Danlos syndrome diagnosis is all three of the major criteria and a family history compatible with autosomal recessive transmission. As with most types of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, there is a molecular test to confirm. Cardiac valvular EDS, otherwise known as CV EDS. It is a recessive gene, unlike the first two we saw, which were both dominant genes. Major criteria. Number one, severe cardiac valvular problems. Number two, skin involvement. So skin hyperextendability, atrophic scars, thin skin, and easy bruising. Number three is joint hypermobility. Minor criteria. Number one, inguinal hernia. Number two, pectus deformity. Number three, joint dislocations. Number four, foot deformities. The minimal criteria suggested for a diagnosis of CV EDS is major criteria one, the severe progressive cardiac valvular problems, I mean it's literally in the name, and a family history compatible with a recessive inheritance. Plus, either one of the other major criteria and or at least two minor criteria. Confirmative molecular testing is obligatory to reach a final diagnosis. So like the others, molecular testing is key. Moving on to vascular EDS. Vascular EDS is inherited dominantly. Major criteria, family history of VDS with a documented causative variant in the COL3A1. I don't know what that means. Aerial rupture at a young age. Spontaneous sigmoid colon perforation in the absence of known diventricular disease or other bowel pathology. Uterine rupture during the third trimester in the absence of a previous C-section and or severe peripartum perineum tears. Cartoid cavernous sinus fistula formation in the absence of trauma. Minor criteria. Bruising unrelated to identified trauma and or in unusual sites such as cheeks and back. Thin translucent skin with increased venous visibility. Characteristic facial appearance. Spontaneous pneumothorax, acrogyria, talipes equinevrius, congenital hip dislocation, hypermobility of small joints, tendons and muscle rupture, keratoconus, gingival recession and gingival fragility, early onset of varicose veins under the age of 30. Minimal criteria suggested for a VDS diagnosis is a family history of the dis disorder, arterial rupture, or dissection in individuals less than 40 years of age, unexplained sigmoid colon rupture, or spontaneous pneumothorax in the presence of other features consistent with VDS. Should all lead to diagnostic studies to determine if the individual has VDS. VDS should also be considered in the presence of a combination of other minor clinical factors listed above. As with most of the other Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome classifications, VDS can be confirmed by a molecular study. Hypermobile EDS. Now I already made a video more in depth about this. Feel free to go watch that. I'll link it down below. But I'm gonna run through these real fast if you missed that and just want the rundown. So, criterion one, generalized joint hypermobility. Criterion two, two or more among the following features listed A through C must be present. For example, A and B, B and C, A and C. Easy, or A, B, and C if you're lucky. Feature A is systemic manifestations of a more generalized connective tissue disorder. I explain more about that in my other video. Feature B is a positive family history. And feature C is musculoskeletal complications. If you want more information about each of those areas, check out my video. Criterion three, all of the following prerequisites must be met. Absence of unusual skin fragility, which should prompt consideration of other types of EDS. Exclusion of heritable and acquired connective tissue disorders, including autoimmune rheumatologic conditions in patients with acquired connective tissue disorders, such as lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, etc. Additional diagnosis of HEDS requires meeting both features A and B of criterion 2. Feature C of criterion 2 cannot be counted toward the diagnosis of HEDS in this situation. Now you know. Exclusion
exclusion of all alternative diagnoses that may include joint hypermobility by means of hypotensia and or connective tissue elasticity. Hypermobile EDS is the one type of EDS that does not have a gene mutation linked to it as of yet, so currently the diagnosing of it is purely clinical, which is why the diagnostic criteria for HEDS are so much more specific and broken down and complicated. I did make a 10 minute video on it, you can check out, as I say, for the third time. I really want you to check it out. I had fun making it.